GMO, genetically modified organisms. They take genes from one species and force it into the DNA of other species. And they can mix and match between species that have never normally made it. So they have spider genes that they put into goats in the hopes that they can milk the goat to get spiderweb protein to make bulletproof vests. I'm not making this up. They've taken cow genes and put them into pigs so that the pigs have cow hides. They've taken human genes and put it into corn to make spermicide. And for the food we eat, there's two main categories. The herbicide tolerant crops, they can spray them with herbicide and not kill them. Or the pesticide producing crops, that produce their own toxic insecticide that if a bug bites those plants, it breaks open the stomach and kills them. So they're completely swapping genes between the normal species barriers, creating new organisms that were not part of the evolutionary process. The general public has the impression that genetic engineering is somehow a precise science. More accurately, it's uh, submicroscopic shooting from the hip. The very process of genetic engineering creates unpredicted side effects. You take a gene and make millions of copies, and then put them in a gun, literally, and then shoot that gun into a plate of millions of cells. And then you clone those cells into a plant. Typically what they will put onto that is a virus or a part of a virus in order to turn that gene on. Now the process of insertion plus cloning creates massive collateral damage. There can be hundreds or thousands of mutations up and down the DNA and hundreds or thousands of genes can change their levels of expression in the naturally functioning plant. This creates unpredicted side effects. From a biophysics perspective, when we look at the signature now of that entire gene sequence, it's foreign. It does not exist anywhere in nature. And therefore, our immune system, which is truly a grand electromagnetic sensor system, looks at that material, that gene sequence that is supposed to be food, whether it's soy or corn or whatever it might be, looks at that and says, I've never seen that sequence ever. It doesn't exist in nature. It's foreign. It attacks. It creates an inflammatory reaction and attacks that sequence. Many of the diseases that we deal with, in fact, most of the diseases that we deal with have uh, as a source inflammation. Many of them, the source is inflammation in the gut, which is, of course, the first interface between the body and any kind of food, including GMO food. In 1996, genetically engineered soy and corn were introduced into the American diet. Since then, numerous digestive disorders related to gut inflammation have been on the rise in the U.S. population. Is this just a coincidence? But inflammation creates additional serious disorders unrelated to digestion. So I think we should probably look at allergies. I'm sure we should look at autoimmune diseases. And, uh, you know, basically anything that's, that's related to inflammation, heart disease, kidney disease, diabetes, I mean, it doesn't stop, thyroid disease. Protecting the food supply, making it safe, making it nutritious is uh, one of the most fundamental duties of government and then of course of FDA. When you think about the importance of food to public health, to the health of people, uh, there's really nothing more fundamental. The current FDA policy on GMOs, created in 1992, says that the agency is not aware of any information showing that GMOs are significantly different. Therefore, no safety studies are necessary. It turns out that in 1998, a lawsuit forced 44,000 secret internal memos into the public domain, and they showed a different story. As I combed through those 44,000 pages of memoranda and other documents, I was shocked because it became clear that the FDA had been lying repeatedly since 1992 because they claimed that there was an overwhelming consensus within the scientific community that these foods are safe. But the overwhelming consensus within their own scientific staff was exactly opposite. These foods could not be presumed safe. The overwhelming consensus among the scientists working at the FDA 
were not only that GMOs were different, but that they were dangerous. They could lead to allergies, toxins, new diseases, and nutritional problems, they said over and over in their memos. They urged their superiors to require long-term studies, but were ignored. Why? The person in charge of policy at the FDA was Michael Taylor, Monsanto's former attorney, later Monsanto's vice president, now back at the FDA as U.S. food safety czar. What Monsanto and the biotech industry wanted from the FDA was a policy that created the illusion that genetically engineered foods are being diligently regulated, but that in fact imposed no burdens at all, that in fact had zero regulation. And the FDA has pulled that off masterfully. And so the FDA does not approve any genetically modified crops. There's a voluntary consultation process where companies like Monsanto can produce whatever science it wants. If the FDA asks for further information, they're typically ignored. At the end of this meaningless exercise, the FDA produces a letter which reminds Monsanto that it's its responsibility to determine if the foods are safe. So the same company, Monsanto, that told us that PCBs, Agent Orange, and DDT were safe and lied, can tell us if GMOs are safe. In fact, they don't even have to tell us. They can put it on the market without telling the FDA or to consumers. If they have been creating the kinds of problems that the FDA scientists warned that they could be, that the various scientists in our lawsuit warned about, that the expert panel of the Royal Society of Canada has warned about, that the British Medical Association has warned about, that scores and scores of other scientific experts have warned about, then there already could have been major damage created to the health of every American and to the health of coming generations. The FDA, the USDA and the EPA are all responsible for different aspects of our food production and they're signing off on this in a way that is, uh, I mean, it's beyond outrageous. They've appointed known advocates of GMO food to positions like Secretary of Agriculture. Foods are important positions in which independent decision making should be done and appointing people that work for the main offender on this to those positions is insane. I think this is the most alarming thing that I have seen in Washington, that we would clear new unique products uh, for human consumption without careful independent testing of these products. I can only think that, that money is the reason. The American Academy of Environmental Medicine took a very strong position against GMO because such research as has been done is very, very disturbing. The American Academy cited animal studies showing infertility, immune problems, accelerated aging, complications with cholesterol and insulin, and changes in the liver, kidney, spleen, and gastrointestinal system. And unfortunately, the American consumer for 20 years now has been consuming the foods that the FDA scientists said should not be on the market until they're proven safe because the FDA continues to lie about the truth. The biotech companies do their own research. I call it tobacco science. They use the wrong control group, the wrong detection method, the wrong statistics, and their feeding trials are so short they could never identify things like cancer or reproductive disorders or birth defects. They've got bad science down to a science. There's a soil bacterium called Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt. And if you take that bacteria and gather it up and use it as a spray, the Bt toxin produced by the bacteria will kill insects. So engineers take the gene that produces the toxin and insert it into corn and cotton and allow the plants to do the killing. Every single cell within that plant is producing a toxic protein. Bt is designed to break open the stomach of insects and kill them. So when the doctors hear about this, that Bt corn was introduced into our diet in the mid-90s, they say this may explain the increase in gastrointestinal problems that they're seeing in their practice. But the EPA says, don't worry about Bt toxin. It's completely harmless to human beings and animals because it only affects insects. However, study that came out in February 2012 showed that the EPA got it wrong. It does break open little pores in human cells, and it might cause the same kind of disruption in our guts as it's causing in the insects that it kills. If Bacillus thuringiensis 
is causing an increased propensity for our intestine to become permeable or leaky and for foods to be presented to our bloodstream in a premature fashion, the havoc that it will cause will be across the entire spectrum of disease, from premature aging and Alzheimer's to Parkinson's to autism to cancer to asthma. There is no part of the spectrum because we start the same as if you buy a brand new car and it says on that that it's meant to run on gas and you go put diesel in it, you can expect it won't go very far. So when you put the wrong fuel into your body and by making your intestine leaky, we are permitting building blocks to go into our body that are the wrong fuel. They have not been adequately prepared by our digestive processes and by the simple fact that the healthy flora in our body converts our food to active things like the right form of vitamin K is only elaborated in your body. Many of the foods that we eat are not in their active form until the healthy flora begins to work on them. And disrupting that flora is why we see so much of the eczema, so much of the asthma, so much of the allergies in our population. There's only been one human feeding study on genetically modified foods. And they found that part of the gene inserted into soybeans that make the soybeans Roundup Ready transferred into the DNA of bacteria living inside our intestines and stayed there. Furthermore, that bacteria was not killable with Roundup suggesting that the gene remained active. This means long after we stop eating genetically modified foods, we may still have these genetically modified proteins produced continuously inside of us. They never checked to see if the Bt toxin gene transferred from, say, corn chips into our gut bacteria and continued to function. If it does, it might turn our intestinal flora into living pesticide factories. This might explain why 93% of pregnant women tested in Canada had the Bt toxin in their blood, as well as in the blood of 80% of their unborn fetuses. The authors of the study suggested that the Bt toxin came as a result of eating the milk and meat of animals that ate Monsanto's Bt corn. But I think a more plausible explanation is that the Bt toxin was produced continuously inside their own digestive tract. Lab animals fed Roundup Ready soy have had serious reproductive disorders. In mice, the testicles changed, including damage to the young sperm cells. In rats, there were changes in the uterus and ovaries. The DNA functioned differently in the embryo offspring of mice. When female rats were fed genetically modified soy, more than half of their babies died within three weeks. The babies were also smaller and could not reproduce. When mice were fed genetically modified Roundup Ready and Bt corn, they had fewer babies and smaller babies. Preliminary evidence that's not yet published can be even worse. In rats, the testicles change from pink to blue. In hamsters by the third generation, most lost the ability to have babies. Some had hair growing in their mouths. This is astounding research, and yet it's never followed up. Typically, the industry distorts or denies the findings pretending that there's no problem. Where we used to have one fertility clinic for uh, people, we now have an average of 14. In our community, and where I live, within 100 miles of my house, there's 50 infertility clinics. 20 years ago, there probably wasn't any. Let's review what we have so far. Genetic engineering transfers genes between species. The process itself creates mutations throughout the DNA, which can produce new allergens, toxins, and other nasties. The inserted genes and their proteins may trigger inflammation, which might promote numerous problems such as digestive disorders, allergies, diabetes, autoimmune disease, cancer, Alzheimer's, kidney disease, thyroid disease, and heart attacks. Genetically engineered Bt corn produces an insecticide which may break holes in our intestinal walls. If so, experts link gut permeability to allergies, autism, and premature aging, as well as other disorders such as autoimmune disease, cancer, asthma, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and others. Most GM plants are engineered to survive doses of Roundup herbicide. Roundup steals nutrients, which can lead to nutrient-deficient plants, animals, and humans. Roundup can also cause birth defects and other reproductive disorders. 
lab animals that ate Roundup Ready crops lost a large number of offspring. Roundup is also linked to infertility, which may be from disrupted hormones, nutrient deficiency, or a brand new organism. FDA scientists had warned that GMOs were dangerous, but their boss was a Monsanto man. Monsanto sells Roundup and most GM seeds. The FDA doesn't require any studies and doesn't monitor any health issues linked to GMOs. You know, sometimes we hear that uh, Monsanto can't be beat, you know, that the, the genie's out of the bottle or the genes are out of the bottle. Well, that just is not true. In the last 15 years, you and me and all of us, we have defeated genetically engineered tomatoes. They don't exist. Genetically engineered potatoes, they tried that. We got rid of that. Genetically engineered wheat. That was Monsanto's big, big, big try. All the wheat in the world has been genetically engineered. We defeated that. Genetically engineered rice. We defeated that. Genetically engineered biopharmaceuticals. This is when they were going to put all those vaccines into your food. That was defeated. Genetically engineered alfalfa, which is going to destroy our organic dairy industry. For six years we have stopped that and we're right in court to stop it again right now. Genetically engineered bent grass and all your schools and golf courses. We've defeated that. So they can be beat, they have been beat, and we will win. We will win this. It's in our hands. It's right in front of us. It's just a matter of avoiding genetically modified foods and inspiring others to do the same.